Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're looking at overhead saw robots. Now, I've tried to do one of these in the past and uh, yeah, that didn't go very well. We ended up adapting and modifying this about six times on the fly in the space of a single competition. Uh, it just kind of exploded on its first real hit with an opponent. Uh, so I want to do something about that today and to do something about that we're going to decouple the weapon arm from the servo because this mostly broke where the servo was actually connected into the chassis you can see that there's not a lot of plastic down in the bottom here connecting that in place and there was a little loop over the top but that broke off and by the weight limit there's always not going to be a lot of plastic holding your servo in place also the servo uh, is kind of garbage. It doesn't run on the receivers that I have. If you do that, it just kind of uh, sparks and dies within about two minutes of being uh, put into use. So there are some big changes that I want to make and I'm going to take some inspiration from the design of uh, Flaming Dragon here. And what I mean by that is we're going to take the servo. So we've got a tiny little servo, which is a high voltage servo in here, which will do a much better job. It's also smaller and lightweight, which means I can put more weight into other things. And those other things are going to be gears. So we've got a gear stack up here that I've uh, 3D printed, uh, which you can barely see in there. Um, so I'm going to try and use a smaller servo with a gear driven axe so that the load of the weapon hitting something is going to be taken up by a shaft and an axle rather than by the gears and, oh sorry, by the servo and whatever the servo is being mounted to. So, the first thing we need to do is uh, get some design work going on this thing. Uh, and I personally use 123D design just to kind of block out most of the shapes and then I go over to Fusion 360 to do the gears and the motor and mountings and that kind of stuff. With that done I then normally go ahead and print a prototype so not the full chassis or anything like that but just a handful of parts. And here's our prototype so this is one of the arms that is going to hold up it's going to hold the server and it's also going to hold the axle for this thing. So this has been printed lying flat this way, which means it has a lot of strength in this direction, which is basically what it needs. I've just screwed this servo into here for the time being. Uh, this will probably come out again later. But then I've also got the arm and the arm you can see I've pressed a bearing into one side and then the other side. It's actually a little bit loose on the other side, but that should be okay. Uh, so then we can install that on here oh, and actually I've got that around the wrong way it's kind of subtle uh, but the flat side so this is the side that the bolts go into the other side which is flat needs to go towards the servo so we'll take that out and that loose bearing is very very annoying <laughs> uh, but that is why we do prototyping so that we can tighten up all of those tolerances and then I'll throw a nut on the other side of this. Now, the first thing that I can tell you about this is that this is crazy. Those bearings are great. Um, and in actual fact, I think that's too much. We don't need this to be this loose. Uh, you can see it just, there's no friction in this thing at all, which is great. Bearings are doing what they're supposed to do. And even if I tighten them down fairly well, they're still, still really nice. But this thing's never going to move that fast. There's never going to be loads and loads of friction in here um, anyway. And yeah, we can do something with some like, grease or something instead of using bearings, saving some weight. So this is why I do prototypes like this, is so that I can work out whether or not uh, this is a good idea. And in this case, it's actually a bad idea because all it is doing is it is taking up weight. Uh, so then finally, I have... a servo horn that I've cut down on the servo and then I've got a hole, a corresponding hole in here uh, which can then slide this gear onto. Uh, now I don't have any of this powered up just yet, I could go ahead and do that in a second but you can see I've got this bolt tightened down and I can move the servo and move the um, that's perfect and there is really no binding in this. The, I'm getting a little bit of pushback but that's from trying to force the servo around. 
So that's pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and print a second version of this arm that doesn't have these bearings in place. See if we can actually save that little bit of weight. Here's that new part. It just slips right on there. It is actually a little bit loose. I think I got my tolerances just a little bit wrong on this part, but it will be okay for testing. Uh, we will deal with that problem a little bit later on, I think. I also printed the other side, so this is supposed to sit over here somewhere, but of course we need to put the servo gear on first before we do that. I also printed a flexible PLA servo gear. So again, hopefully uh, this thing will take some of the impact away. I'm just gonna hot glue our uh, servo horn in here, just temporarily, because yeah, this is all just test case stuff. Go in there, cool. So that should hold well enough for now. Uh, and I set the servo up so that it is exactly on center at the moment. So I've also rigged up this little dodgy setup here. I've got a servo tester at the back, a five volt regulator, and then a 2S battery up here that we're just gonna plug in and do that. So then hopefully we should just be able to Screw this guy on here a little bit somehow. I don't actually know exactly how far away these need to be and I won't until I've got the chassis printed, but we'll do that in a little bit. So now I should be able to power this up and have it do things maybe. Cool, so I can hear the servo. Let's see if we... Huh. Okay, so the full swing of this thing is nowhere near as much as I thought it was. And in fact, that looks like we're only getting about 90 degrees. I don't think that's right. I think the servo tester is a bit dodgy because you can see we're not getting all that much travel here. And I believe the servo can do more than this, but you can see my gearing spacing is totally fine. That runs on the bolt, no problems. Uh, so I might look at printing another one of these that's got the spacing better because that is a little bit wobbly and if I'm going to hang a weapon off that and you can see how wobbly it is, it's leaning over to one side. Yeah, so I'm going to hang a weapon on that. I don't really want it to be wobbly like this because that's kind of scary. Uh, but yeah, we'll get another one of those printed and then we'll also get the chassis printed at the same time. Okay, that's... New Walker robot, maybe? Cool. So here is our new chassis. As you can see, it's very similar to the old chassis. Uh, there's just a little bit of extra space in the back for electronics and things. Uh, and it's also got an actual dustpan in here now. However, I was thinking about this while I was printing it and realized that I actually want to remove the dustpan from the middle because when I'm riding up on somebody else's wedge, if I'm up like that on somebody else's wedge, I want to be able to put the weapon through a gap in the chassis and hit the thing that I'm riding around on. So I will be doing a different version of this, but this is all prototype stuff. So there'll be an ABS print of this eventually, and I will use that print to tweak the shape of everything and kind of tweak everything out a little bit and just make sure that it all fits. Now, the other thing too, is that the, uh, the wall where these uprights connect into, because these guys go in there, that wall is pretty thin right now where they connect. And the whole idea is that this is gonna be ABS. So these will be acetone welded into place. So there'll be six mil of solid-ish ABS all kind of welded up around that area, which will be perfect. And it will mean that, uh, yeah, we will have lots of contact in here and we'll have quite a strong mount, or at least I hope we'll have quite a strong mount. I also didn't bother printing another one of these. I've just decided that I'm gonna do the lazy thing and use spacers. So we're gonna put a spacer there and another one on the other side before tightening down the top, which should, and actually that's the wrong way around. 
but that should allow us to uh, use this thing without the oh that's too tight so we'll go about to about there so that will kill a little bit of that wobble not a lot but we can tighten that up in the ABS print and this should all just click into here and then there should be a screw that goes through the front once again like I said this will be an ABS weld uh, in the final version and be a lot stronger in actual fact in this version we probably don't even need the second upright but we're going to leave it there for the moment this screwdriver is terrible cool all right so there we go that is now set and ready to go so next thing is to get some new electronics into here so why a new electronic set? Well, this is why a new electronic set. This is a newer transmitter that I've got that I'm just starting to get uh, some use out of, and it's going to allow me to do some different control setups for this hammer saw. Now, the version that I fought uh, the other time, it had the spinner on this axis and then the hammer on this axis, which meant that as you were pushing the spinner up or as you were using the hammer, you were slowing the the spinner down, which just did not work. Having everything all in one stick was a bit of a pain. So what I've got here, this is the hammer setup. So this will set the speed of the spinner. And then this guy up here does the motion of the hammer. So I can slam the hammer forwards just by flicking a little push button at the top here, which is gonna be great. Uh, Cause that means I don't have to change the speed of the spinner to activate the hammer which is gonna work a lot nicer. I also have a different mode set up in this here, uh, which is the saw mode. Yep. So inside the saw mode, uh, we now have the opposite basically. This activates the saw, so this gives me the position of the arm, and then this switch here sets the speed of the weapon motor. So once again, I don't need to set the speed of the weapon or I won't be changing the speed of the weapon when I'm actuating the arm, which is going to make my life a lot easier when I'm trying to control this thing. So now it's time to get all of these electronics into the robot uh, and get some stuff ready so that we can actually do some tests to see if either of these control systems make any sense when I'm actually controlling a robot. Oh man, that took ages so the wiring is still kind of a mess but at least it works now <laughs> it's taken me like a day of binding and rebinding and remixing and all sorts of stuff to try and work out what's going on turns out there was a hardware issue with the receiver it's for some reason shorting ground to pin 4 so you can't get a signal out of pin 4 uh, anyway, I've moved everything over to pin 5. It seems to be working. Uh, I've now also got uh, some stuff set up so that we can throw a saw on this. So that's the next trick. When I throw a saw on it, put it in the arena and try the saw mode out first. Then I'll throw a weapon blade on it and try out the hammer mode. Now I have a feeling the hammer mode is just going to break everything because it's not acetone welded or anything right now. But that's going to give us good data. Wherever it breaks, we need to stiffen that part up for the ABS print because even though it's going to be stronger in ABS, that weakness point, the first point that breaks here is going to be the first point that breaks there too. So we should get some usable data out of this one way or another. So that was promising, 
But that kind of wobble on the arm, even though I put those spaces in, there's still a little bit of side to side jitter in that arm. Uh, that means that you're not getting all of the power down into the saw and pushing into the other robot, which means it's not cutting as much as it possibly could. Uh, which, yeah, that's that's a thing. So it means that we need, we actually do need to make sure that when we print that new arm, that the bearing point, because it's not actually going to be bearings, is as close to the diameter of the bolt as we possibly can get it so that it moves nice and freely but doesn't wobble anywhere because any wobble means less cut action on the uh, on the other robot and you can see that kind of here the other thing too is that in this clip i also sped the saw up and it does a lot more damage when it's sped up it kind of cuts through a lot more it melts the plastic a lot better it's just good i like that so we can do that for sure the problem is, uh, the whole robot is overweight already. It's 8 grams overweight now, as it currently stands, uh, which means I need to do some modification to the chassis, and I'll probably need to run a smaller saw blade on it, which is sad. I like the big saw blade. Um, but it also means that the next thing we're going to try, we probably can't do in competition, which is the overhead weapon type attack. So let's just put this on and take a look at it anyway. Cool, so a couple of big things of note. Hey, the spinner came off, <laughs> which that came off because I didn't lock tight the bolts in place because it's a prototype. Uh, it doesn't really matter all that much. Two, the rest of the stuff actually held up. No acetone welding, no hot glue or anything even holding this in. It's just two bolts at the front holding these uprights in and it all survived. So that's really cool. The acetone weld will be way better and way stronger than that. We're gonna be golden on that front. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and three, it's pathetic. <laughs> it did very, very little damage to the duck robot, less so than the saw did to the duck. Uh, in fact, you can't really even see on the duck itself where there aren't actually markings from the overhead weapon. So that's just kind of crazy to me. Uh, also, the whole thing is way, way overweight with the spinner on it. So... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to run the spinner, especially not in this configuration. Uh, the little damage that I was getting kind of indicates to me that it needs more bite, which means I need to move it up to a single tooth weapon rather than this double blade design. Uh, and yeah, we just need more weight in the whole robot in general to do that. And also, even at uh, max speed, just flicking that switch to tell the servo to go from here down to there, it's not going very fast, which means that the impacts are a little bit lessened on what I was wanting them to be. So I would need to probably change the gearing stack up in here, do a half to like one to two ratio in here so that I get more swing on the arm and it also goes faster to make this thing kind of viable in any way, shape or form. But like I said, it's still all overweight anyway. So maybe we just run with the saw blade for a little while and we see how the saw blade goes. Oh, we'll have to make some changes, print everything in ABS, uh, you know, do a few bits and pieces, yada, 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 to get the saw blade in underweight and working. But as a prototype and a proof of concept, I like this. I think it's gone pretty well. I've learned a decent amount about it and I can redo my design, ready to print it in ABS, ready to have it in combat and up and running. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.